Today's topic is the 20 minute walk test. And this is one of our basic aerobic tests that we do within the Strength Matters assessments. We also do a 2K row, 10 minute assault bike test, and if and when appropriate, a 5K run. Um, it's a bit of an aerobic snapshot, shall we say. Uh, and I think when we give it to most people, they think it's going to be easier than it actually is. And I think steps and number of steps, like taking 10,000 steps, is becoming being talked about much more, becoming more mainstream. We know for fat loss, you ideally need to do at least 8,500 steps. So it's been talked about more. What's not been talked about, though, which is something there that, that we're talking about, is walking at speed, which is the whole point uh, of the 20-minute walk test. James, we've got a little study well, no, we didn't do the study, but there is research out there about why you need to walk at speed. Yeah, so when we were looking at volume. So we, when we built up WWS Walk, Water, Sleep, our method for like before anyone starts to do any training plan or nutrition plan, they need to walk 7,500 steps a day. They need to 7,000 steps a day. They need to drink seven glasses of water and sleep seven hours a night. We started looking more into the research about walking. And then we came up with this study. It was a study of four. And I'll read out exactly what it says here on the actual study itself. It was a study of 475,000 people by the University of Leicester. They found women who walk briskly at over four miles per hour enjoy a life expectancy boost of up to 15 years over those who walk at less than three miles an hour. For men, the life expectancy boost was even higher at around 20 years. Now, anecdotally, I've seen over the years, look at all the number of old people who shuffle around in the street, who struggle across the road, who struggle to walk anywhere without a Zimmer frame potentially or a mobility scooter, I am adamant that that's not going to happen to me. I do not want to be that person when I'm 90 or 100 years old. I want to be snowboarding. So I was like this going, oh, this is interesting. So where do we go with this? Because yes, we need volume as well to, to improve health expectancy, life expectancy and basic fitness. It's a great way of boosting aerobic fitness too in terms of doing it for long periods of time. But we need to look at the speed side of things. Yeah, exactly. And hundred percent vitamin D, all that sort of stuff, right? But for this, for me, this was like, oh, this is potentially game changing. We now compare, compare and contrast the two of them for a real boost. So let's give it a go. So we we did a variety of different tests. Obviously, we you know we tried it out. Then we just walking four miles in an hour, and it was okay. It was doable, but it was it was tough. But then I asked other people to do it, and they struggled. They really struggled because they hadn't walked for that long period of time before particularly the americans sorry americans i'm going to pick on you guys here now because because europeans we're used to this walking pace and we're used to walking everywhere whereas our american counterparts if they don't live in a big city they're not so we found this is interesting so we can't get them to do a four mile an hour walk test let's bring them down a little bit first so we ended up settling on this idea of like can you walk 1.5 miles or 2.41 kilometers for our european friends in 20 minutes and that was a really good way of finding a benchmark of getting people to do it. Most people couldn't do it, but with a bit of training, right, we have people of all ages being able now to do it from young to old in their 60s, right? And that's the big thing because you can't make a 60-year-old go and run a 5K test. That's just inappropriate. Or in some cases, a 2K row or a, a you know a, an assault bike test is just too much if they haven't got the equipment. So but what well, this is a great level because we all hopefully need to walk, right? And this is a great level for everybody. Yeah. And I see a lot of people, even like good athletes, struggling to do this 1.5 miles an hour in 20 minutes. They think, yeah, I can do it easy. They go and try it and they struggle. They struggle. So it's a great way of test of helping people get out and walk more. It's a great way of help basic, uh, boosting basic aerobic capacity for a lot of people who don't move. But more importantly, we're doing it based on the studies to improve people's life expectancy to maintain their walking speed as they age, which I think is more important than anything else. Yeah, 100%. I mean, we're all about health and longevity here. If you haven't got your health, you don't have anything. So, you know, that's why we give every no matter what your age or ability, when you do the assessments, you get the 20 minute walk test. And we try to give it to everyone up and to the point where they pass that test in a, in an ideal world get to 1.5 uh, miles and not everyone can do it we, we get people as close as we can um but I, what i love is when people when we give people the goal we don't initially tell them what we want them to do we just say walk 20 minutes uh, as, as fast as you can and then when we say well what do, what do i need to get to oh it's 1.5 miles they love it they see it then as a challenge 
Um, you know, we've had a, quite a few clients who's like, right, I'm going to do that three times, four times a week, and until I until I nail that 1.5 miles, it's a really good challenge. Exactly, and, and the other good thing as well is it's something that you can do easily and incorporate as part of your daily life, walking into town, walking to places. And it's also something that I find, normally, if I, if I was going to say to somebody, right, I want you to do a, a balls to the wall 2K road test every day for the next <laughs> They'd be like, no, six no, weeks. No, they to, it, it's not a good, that is not a good way to improve your 2K road time. However, conversely, I found with this, is that the more often you do it, it's more like the set principle. Like you do it often enough and it literally is having an effect that doesn't affect their training, their daily life or anything else at all. It seems to have a positive effect on it. So we're getting people to do, like I said, to do the test three, four, five times a week sometimes or wherever they can just to get used to building up this walking pace so it becomes naturally. So building, we have this thing called, we want to build your speed base essentially so you can operate below a certain threshold with some of our athletes we're working with, right? So if we increase their speed from 29 miles an hour to 22 miles an hour, it means working and operating at 20 miles an hour becomes way more efficient and it becomes less chance of, of injury. That's essentially what the speed guy's doing for so many conditioning sports. But we're doing the same with this. We want to increase the speed right, as far as fast as we possibly can do to increase their walking speed reserve, basically. To make it easier, so life becomes so much easier for them, and yeah, it it works, and people love it. They do, they do, and it's funny how you, when you're walking at speed, how you suddenly realise, oh, I might need to work on my hip mobility or ankle mobility a little bit because you suddenly remember the first time I tried it, I realised that the mobility in my right leg was horrendous because my foot was like just slapping on the floor as I was trying to like walk really quickly. And the uh, and the burn in the shins was delightful as well at the end. <laughs> exactly, I you know I do it every year, test it out and everything. It's it's still it's a you know it's a good way just to humbly experience to make sure you keep that base and you keep walking fast everywhere. But also conversely, and you can probably explain a bit more about this as well, Josh, because you were, we've been working with one of our clients, Sarah Pakella, who has been rehabbing her knee. She had knee surgery, didn't she, a year and a half ago, and she wants to get back to running because she was a runner. So what did we do? Just well, talk talk us through the protocols, actually. Well, obviously, she got the walk test. She was fine to walk, and I was. Uh, she'd given me some information from her physio, which we we're trying to incorporate into the training plan as well. So we built up to pass the walk test. Then we extended out. So we did thirty minutes, and then forty, forty-five, all the way up to sixty minutes. Once we got to sixty minutes, we then uh, brought it back down to twenty, and we started doing weighted walks. Uh, so again, the the goal was get back up to sixty minutes but still be able to do with 5% body weight and still be able to hit that four miles in 60 minutes. Then you can do 10%, 50, I think we got up to like 15% body weight with her hitting the four mile, over four miles in 60 minutes. So in fact, I think she got five miles once, which was incredible. Um, and then from there, we went to walk jog, obviously without a weight vest. And we've just, it's just built her conditioning up, you know, bones, tendons, ligaments, aerobic base, just everything to enable her. She's like, running now smashing it doing 5k's we're building up to 10k in under 60 minutes so from from where she was a year and a half ago uh, she's done incredible and if, didn't she do a 5k run test more recently at like 24 minutes for the first time she's run that since Nick since that and she found it fairly well, obviously not easy but you know she did, she did a great job of hitting that so that's without doing any running and building up to that stage where we're building up to that stage so she can start this post knee surgery so it's a great rehab tool, and more than anything, guys, it's one of the best fat loss tools I think we can we have at our disposal. I think particularly adding on here, adding a 30-minute walk or 20-minute walk test into your day is doable. You add this onto it, you add a bit of weight. Like when you can get to these sorts of stages, you're starting to add all these numbers up, and it's so it's probably the most powerful tool we add on top of the training and nutrition to add this 30-minute walk with a bit of a weight of water, but do it at speed and see how it goes. Exactly, exactly. It's all about doing it at speed. And as you say, those statistics for increased life expectancy are you know, incredible, aren't they? And who wouldn't want to live a, 15 an extra years. 15 or 20 years? <laughs> exactly. Uh, that is it for today. Please don't forget to rate, review and subscribe. And if you want to find out more about our system of training, go to strengthmanners.com forward slash system.